Hey guys, welcome back to the Blue Elephant Gifts. Today we're going to be doing something cool. We're going to be making some dominoes. So I'm sure you've seen in the thumbnail, we're going to be using these really, really cute little uh, lollipops that I found. They're actually nail art. I mean, look at these. Aren't these the cutest? They come in a variety of different colors. And I'm also going to be using, uh, I guess it's like confetti glitter. Um, it's like those long, skinny little, I don't know, looks like kind of confetti. And a variety of different colors just to um, kind of make it look like a party's going on inside the dominoes. You can see the colors that I'm using. These are just sample colors that I've gotten in some resin like packs that I've purchased before. So, right, so I've already mixed up my resin. I'm using J. Diction's High Gloss Epoxy Resin. It's a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, not by weight. Um, right now, I'm just mixing in a variety of the different colors in there. And this is going to be the first layer of our dominoes. So, if you've never played dominoes before, you know that they have to be completely opaque. You cannot see through the back of them at all. Uh, so I, I want to make sure that I don't fill these up, but honestly, just to kind of cover up the um, dots in the middle. And basically, it's just going to hold my lollipops in place so that they don't float and move around and they stay where I want them later on when we do the backing. Now, if you've never made dominoes before... Um, you do want to make sure after you pour your resin that you go through with a silicone tool or a dotting tool or something just around the 90 degree angles that are there and around all of the little dots and the middle line. Bubbles like to hang out in those areas and you'll find out when you do mold them that it's kind of ruined them or it's given this sharp edge because there's a bubble that got lodged there so do take the time out to do it it'll make your project that much better in the end and that's all you see me doing right here now comes the fun part we get to put our lollipops in so when i ordered them i actually got these from timu i think i paid i don't know maybe 48 cents 50 cents something like that for them um it was supposed to be a pack of 48 of them, which would be exactly what I need um, in order to have two on each domino. Um, unfortunately for me, I did not count before I started placing them, and I don't have quite enough what I need for each one to have two. So there's going to be a couple that come out with only one on them. So it is the next day. Our first layer has dried. I'm just mixing up some more resin for the background. I'm going to be doing a white and pink kind of marbled background. So I've got you five times speed right now. I, I really don't mix my resin this fast. Um, it would be ridiculously full of bubbles. You can just see I'm showing you what it looks like up close with the lollipops in there. Um, I do want the majority of the background to be white with just some kind of pink like swirled through it. Uh, so you can see the container I'm filling now. That's going to be my white. I'm using an unbranded white and an unbranded watermelon for the pink. So this is the part that's going to be really important. If you want your dominoes to be something that the professionals can play or you can actually use it to play dominoes with as opposed to you know, kids just setting them up and knocking them down or whatever. You want to make sure that your back colors are completely um, opaque. That being said, you also want to make sure that if you're going to put a design on them like I'm going to do, um, that you make it so that it's all the same or as close to the same as possible. Um, I've read some stuff on different forums online with domino players saying that, you know, a lot of them will sit there and pay attention to what's on the back of the dominoes. And if there's a difference, then they know which dots are on the front or whatever. And nobody wants to play with them like that. So they kind of steer clear of trying to, I guess, purchase or use those type of dominoes. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. If you decide that you're going to make them yet, yeah, a lot of them are absolutely gorgeous. But if you're making something that you're trying to sell later on, maybe, 
um just kind of keep that in the back of your of your head uh so i did put my white down for most of them and now i'm just going through with the pink um and putting that on top i did not fill my mold up completely because i do want to leave room for the pink as you can see i'm just kind of using a lollipop stick to or a popsicle stick rather to uh just kind of throw some pink on there i did have to make up more white because i didn't quite make enough and i'm going through and i'm adding more on top just filling the mold up to the top you want to make sure that it's they're all the same height so if you're gonna not fill them the whole way make sure that you don't fill them the same height the same way if that makes sense um or just fill your mold completely up on every one of them so that they're all the same thickness at the end. So right now I'm just using up the rest of the resin that I have left because I have a little bit of space left in my molds. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it like I'm doing it. It made a hell of a mess. I wasn't very clean when I did it this way. And when I demold later on, I've got a lot of edges to clean up because I just kind of splooshed it all on there and made a mess um anyway right now i've taken my silicone tool and i'm just kind of swirling the pink and the white um after i'm done with the swirl i'm gonna get my torch and i'm just gonna go over it and pop any surface bubbles that are on the top now i do know that there is a lot of people who have strong opinions one way or another about how to pop bubbles if you're going to use a torch please be very careful don't hold it on there for long don't use a high flame um because you can burn your mold and have it melt onto your resin and destroy your mold so now we are just demolding and you will see what i mean when i said i had a mess to clean up on the edges i don't know if you can see it but they're all sticking together. I've got to use my deburring tool and clean them all off and sand them and all that fun stuff. All right, and here we go. Look at how cute these turned out. I'm super happy with them. I do like them. Um, I love that you can see the whole lollipop. It kind of looks like it's melting into the background with that white showing. Um, the colors just kind of pop on there. And overall, I'm really pleased with them. So now I'm just going to show you really quick um, me cleaning off the edges of them. I did take my deburring tool, and if you've never used one before, it does take a little while to kind of get used to how it works because the head on it kind of pivots and rotates. Um, I recommend using it very, very lightly when you do it so you're not taking big chunks out of it and ruining your pieces. And practice on junk stuff that you've messed up on in the past or whatever before you do any pieces that you're giving away selling whatever the case may be um because you can ruin it very very easily like i did on many pieces um but yeah we're just going to speed through this real quick and then i'm going to show you how i paint the dots on and we'll finish it up at the end with some glamour shots so when I do my dots, um, I actually got this from Leah Dia Designs. If you haven't checked her out on YouTube, you need to. She is very talented and amazing artist. Um, she uses the Deco Art Duraclear. It's a gloss varnish, and then she mixes it with whatever medium she's using to do whatever her project is. So what I'm doing is I'm using that and my cheap art purple red alcohol ink now if you've never used the gloss varnish before you're probably looking at it and saying okay well that's not the color that was in the bottle of your alcohol ink it comes out like a cloudy kind of milky color um when it dries it does dry clear so it will be the actual color of whatever it is that you're using um so when this dries it's going to be that purple red color that i showed in the bottle before um, all I'm doing is I'm taking my silicone tool and I am dipping it into the varnish mixed with the ink and putting it into the dots, filling the lines. Um, you do have a little while for it to dry. So if you get over the lines or come out of the lines or the dots or whatever, you do have time to clear it up. You can wipe it off with a baby wipe. You can use um, your fingers. You can use a paper towel. A cotton swab whatever it'll work to get it off um like i said you do have probably i, I would say a good 20 30 minute work time on it before it starts to dry um 
but it does turn out nice. I, I find it a lot easier to do it this way than to use the um the paint pens and all that stuff in actual like acrylic paint, like painting it on or using my dotting tool to get it on. I have a hell of a time doing it and usually just end up making a mess. So I found this way to be a lot better and I have a lot more colors that I can choose from because I have a huge alcohol ink collection um, or you can if you don't want to use the alcohol inks um, you can use the resin dyes you can mix it with um, acrylic paint if you have like the thicker paint and you want to thin it out some I've done that before too and it works well um, but yeah I, I, I do like this technique so I'm glad that she showed it and I can put it into my art as well well, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you learned something. I hope you're inspired. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Uh, hit that like button. You have no idea how much it does for me and pushes my videos out there for other people to see. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. I've got some really cool, interesting things coming up here in the next several weeks, months. Um, and I can't wait to share it with you guys. Thanks again. Love you. Bye.